Uh, the focus obviously has been uh, South and Southeast Asia, but I'm pleased that in addressing those, uh, the gamut has been broadened, uh, as it should be, to include the Pacific region, uh, Central Asia as well. So very much in keeping with uh, the AFPPD's uh, work plan for the past year or so, uh, it's covered the breadth of the region and that's been something that's been uh, extremely encouraging because previously either intentionally or unintentionally there's been uh, not a marginalisation but uh, more of a focus on particular areas of the region and now that uh, the horizons and spectrums have been broadened uh, it's better for us all in the, in the long term. So it's been extremely positive, yes. Uh, the very first panel discussion, which I was fortunate enough to chair, was uh, for me personally I found very informative because it addressed uh, the traditional areas where human trafficking occurs, uh, areas where there are con there's conflict, uh, areas where there's prostitution, uh, forced labour, modern slavery, but we were fortunate in also finding um, ties that aren't uh, traditionally recognised but need to be so. For example, uh, I just came back from London from uh, having a session with the Joint Committee on Human Rights and they brought in some of the major uh, clothing retailers, Marks and & Spence and Next, etc. And the reason they brought them in was to check their supply chain to ensure that uh, the goods being uh, consumed by people in uh, the metropolitan countries were not manufactured as a result of uh, human trafficked labour. And that was one of the areas that was brought up in the very first session, which I think uh, establishing ties between not just South-South cooperation, which is a large focus of the AFPPD, but tying that to our relationships with the metropolitan powers and ensuring that both our domestic uh, regional and international policies uh, make allowance and address that is something that I found extremely informative and of use for me to take back to Tonga and to the Pacific. Um, so I know we haven't seen all the sessions yet from right. the panel, but if there's a, one takeaway message that you would bring back to the Pacific podcast, right. what would it be? Uh, so far it would be, as I said, the, the, there's been a focus on the traditional areas where human trafficking occurs both uh, contextually as well as geographically. But there is an impact of human trafficking in the Pacific. And uh, in Tonga in particular, um, we've had our very first case a few years ago um, of prosecution for, for human trafficking under our new legislation. So the takeaway would be um, a recognition that it is a concern both in my country and in our region. <coughs> Excuse me. And the cooperation with the AFPPD and the intergovernmental and international organisations in establishing best practice and how to deal with that both in the short, mid and long term is something that I'm, I'm extremely pleased about for the future. And what are your hopes and expectations at the end of this conference? Uh, at the end of this conference, well as I said, precisely that, to be able to take back best practice from uh, uh, sharing what knowledge we have with our colleagues and taking from their experiences. And as with many things, there'll be commonalities across the board um, of best practice that we can use regionally and internationally. But we also need to tailor them um, domestically and, and nationally. And I'm, I'm quite encouraged that uh, there is a focus to ensure that there is specific tailoring for specific countries and regions, and that it's not a... Um, one answer for everybody, and I think that's that's the way forward. And in your opinion, what do you think are some of the key challenges facing human trafficking in Tonga and mm. the region? Uh, I think in Tonga and in our region, firstly would be um, ratification of the the necessary uh, international covenants and conventions, uh, translating those into domestic legislation, and uh, as is often the case. Um, you can achieve best practice on paper, but ensuring that implementationally uh, those are enforceable and are actually enforced across the board. 
So that's something that um, I'll be working towards personally and particularly through our national committee and the work that we do, um, both in conjunction with and in monitoring uh, the executive as well as our specific committee work. So yes, I'm extremely encouraged by that. I think AFPPD is currently doing an excellent job in so far as they are able to identify the very um, particular role that parliamentarians play uh, in, in this process. Uh, a sitting government will always have its, its own position. So those of us who are parliamentarians who are not members of the executive uh, AFPPD has been of great assistance in capacity building, um, in providing assistance, uh, technical assistance, uh, being the conduit for both intergovernmental and international uh, body relationships to ensure that we are able to perform that very particular function, which is distinct from um, uh, being a sitting government or the executive. There's a very distinct and specialised role that MPs play. And at the committee level, um, dealing with NGOs and CSOs, MPs tend to have uh, a, a closer working relationship with them than a sitting executive. So the AFPPD is extremely um, positive and encouraging across this, this spectrum um, of the particular roles of, of MPs and that's something that I hope continues into the future. And I have one last question. So mm -hmm. Uh, well, in our, um, our commitment document from this particular meeting, we recall and uh, we recognise the various uh, international conventions, the various meetings and conferences that we've had, uh, what the uh, results have been, but the very first action clause uh, is, is a four or five word sentence to end all human trafficking. So that would be my message for, for, for Human Trafficking Day. It's a very simple, very straightforward, very brief sentence, but that's the goal and that's what we're working towards. Thank you. My pleasure. Oh, I need to give you back.